Welcome to the seventh session of the People's Parliament, seated here at the Pacific Hotel in Kapchorwa. This is a platform where Ugandans get to air out their views and opinions on issues that affect their communities and policies of national importance. Agnes Nandutu, the Speaker of the People's Parliament, presides. Madam Speaker, I propose that we discuss the topic of girl-child education. How best can we ensure that the girl-child goes to school, remains there, and com completes their studies? Those in favor, I to the contrary, no? Eyes have it. Welcome once more again to NTV, People's Parliament still sitting here in Kapchora District, Sabine sub-region. And we are discussing yet a very important issue of a girl-child education. As you are aware, honorable members, studies by the Ministry of Education and Sports have shown that in Uganda, a substantial number of children don't progress from primary to secondary school. But girls are particularly more, more hit since many challenges ranging from cultural barriers, negligent, negligent and selfish parents to the lack of to the lack of girl-friendly school environments ensure that girls drop out of school along the way. So the topic this evening is, how best can we ensure that the girl child goes to school, remains there, and complete their studies? Honorable members, let's go get the ball rolling. Can I have one honorable member take up the podium and another one take up the podium to kickstart this topic, please? Honorable Beatrice, you, are, you stay in Kapchora, you are born in Kapchora, have raised in Kapchora, and have studied in Kapchora. How can you assess the extent at which girl children are dropping out of school? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I'm Honorable Beatrice Chelangat. Uh, working, born in the Sabini region, working in the Sabini and Pokot region. I grew up here as a girl. I had my schooling in Kapchora Primary School, my secondary school in Sabay College. What only took me to Kampala is to have my degree. Yeah, but along the way, I lost so many friends. By the time I reached the, the university, I was alone. So many of my friends had fallen out due to the normal dropout both at primary and secondary levels. What were the problems, Honorable Member? According to the UDS uh, uh, survey of 2011, uh, girls or young people between the age of 18 and 24 were interviewed. And all of them informed the government that in every year, 7,000 girls marry or get pregnant before the age of 18. And why is this issue of concern to me? As a statistician, at birth, many boys are born. But many boys don't make it to the first year of their anniversary. And many don't survive to five years. Implying that the highest population we have is of the girls. Unfortunately, when these girls enrolled to school, many enrolled for P1. By P3, many have dropped out. And by P7, almost 80% have dropped out. 80% of the girls drop out of school? Yes. It's an alarming rate. It's an alarming situation which calls for the, uh, for the discussion of this August House. Thank you, Honorable uh, Member. But what, what, what do you think, before I come to you, Honorable Member, what do you think are the challenges? What do you think are the stumbling blocks on the way for them to step out of school? From my experience, it's because of the gender inequality that we have. When you grow up in a home, a boy is allowed to go and kick the ball. As you help your mother take care of the young child and practice how to cook and keep the home. If your mother drinks, it is your role to play her role as a mother until when she comes in the evening. And that predisposes the girl to think of 
marrying Ale because she's able to, marry, uh, to manage her home. Yeah, and then the other one which I will not expand on is the cultural belief that uh, boys, these few boys are more treasured at the family level than the girls. Mm. So because the girls are many, they are not given priority. Okay, thank yeah. you, thank you, Honorable Member. So, Honorable Member holding the floor, what do you think should be done? How best can we ensure that we keep our girls in the Sabine region, in schools? Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. I'm so much excited to be here again. And this is one of the most serious things that we need to urge our people to undertake. Uh, one of the things that our children have been suffering from is uh, the cultural practice, the cultural perception of a girl child has affected our region and basically the Sabine region, in a way that the girl child was considered differently from a boy. That is previously on as far as our culture is concerned. There was much power or concentration or concern given to a girl child, a boy, than a girl child. Our culture is making us lag behind in the whole region in Uganda. So it is the high time that we embrace education and encourage our children, both but majorly our girl child has been lagging behind to continue to do much at school by providing them like the way boys are provided. Give them the necessary needs. If it is scholastic materials, provide them equal to boys or more if it is possible so that you can motivate them to move higher and go higher. More, more of that, uh, I wish for people who have seen the goodness of education should come out. People who are already in high <coughs> institutions, people who are working in big institutions of this country, who belong to this land, should come and sensitize the young ones about the goodness of education. Come back to the roots and tell the children the benefits of education. What you thank are you. out of Th it. Thank you, Honorable Member. Um, Honorable Member holding the floor, I, I am told the girls in this region are married off before even the age of 18. Why do you think our sisters, our children are being married off at such an early age and miss the opportunity to go to school. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. First of all, I'm Honorable Edward Chelangat. Welcome to this uh, people's A son of this soil. Uh, this is how I would uh, put forward the issue of uh, the girl child dropping out of school. I would put it in four categories. One, at family level. The parents also have a, a big responsibility uh, that is contributing to the, to the dropout of the girl child. And why is that? Previous speakers have said that uh, they are giving a lot of priority to boys. That is true. But why? They think boys are of more value than, than girls. And they are, they are quick to marry off their girls at an early age because they want wealth. They marry them at the age of 14, 15 years, in exchange uh, for cows that they can use to educate, the, educate the, the boys. It's not a secret nowadays that uh, most men who have only produced girls have engaged in immoral activities looking for for boys outside, uh, outside marriage. That only tells you how much this, uh, our parents, mostly the, mostly the men, and even women, attach uh, a lot of value to, to boys. So at family level, really, th there is still a very, very big problem. Now, at family level, parents even do not provide for their children at school. They are very sensitive uh, things that are important for a girl child in school. One of it, for example, most of our parents don't know that sanitary pads in schools are very, very important. Most of our, our some of our girls reach P7 when they have started uh, the menstrual period. And a girl in class P7, for example, menstruates. They feel so ashamed. They, they just go back. They keep going back home. They keep going back home. You will realize that most areas where there is a female genetic mutilation, the girl child education is still low. Thank and you. government has not, if government really 
took the issue of uh, FGM Syria that's really a big problem. They should have gone to those communities full scale, full scholarship to that community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. You'll probably come back to complete the issue. But let's have the girl speak. Let's hear from the horse's mouth. Uh, what are the challenges that are making girls drop out of school? Our parents uh, consider girls that these ones that will get married and move to another family. So it is better to educate boys who, who just stay at home and take care of the parents. Now, this for them, they assume uh, these ones will be moved any time out of the family and it's, another family is going to benefit from them. So we better consider boys. I think that's the challenge, why these girls are neglected. And uh, what, what he was saying, I concur with him. Family what? Level. If it has parents, we should take our children equal, either boys or girls. Because this nowadays, the girls who are helping the parents so much than even boys. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Member. I think you have heard in this region uh, that girl children are dropping out of school at a very high rate. But what is the problem? What is the role of the parent to ensure that a girl child is kept at school? Let's go for a short break and when we come back, we shall hear from the parents. What is their role? What should they do to ensure that they keep a girl child in school? Welcome back. We are still discussing the education of girl child here in Captura on NTV People's Parliament. And when we left, we were discussing the role of the parent. Since parents are the ones who are giving priority to, girl, to boys more than the girls at this time, what should the parents do to ensure that our girls go to school and are kept in school? Yes, Honorable Member, you are a parent. What do you think, what is the role of the parent as you to ensure that at least a girl child also gets an opportunity to go to school? The role of the parent is that uh, to bring up all the children in equal, giving them equal opportunity. For example, girl child. The perception down there as a parent, most of the parents perceives that when you educate the child, a girl child, that one will be married off. And at the end of the day, it will affect you economically. Because so you are taking girl children as the people who should bring wealth in the home? No, we are taking boys that, that, that the boys who, when he's educated, is going to stay at home. And at the end of the day, when you are older, he's the one to take care of you. But girls will take care of the other family because she or her will be married to another family. So and as a parent, what do you think should be done to ensure the, the, that at the, least the, in this modern age, okay, we give it, our girls education? Madam Speaker, in this modern age now, we need to sensitize the, the parents. We need to go to the grassroots, right to the families, and edu sensitize them, advise them that girl, educating girl, girl child is as well as educating a nation. And also, the girls who are already educated, should take a lead to come back and help also the parents to remove the perception of the parents whom they say, if you educate a, a girl child, she's going to go under constructed developments in the other home, but in the state also an educated girl child, for example, a rich manager, here I can use her, that if she can, she can go back to her their home, then help the father construct a very good house for the parent. And the states, father. they are doing it. There are very many who are doing it. Then that is a model, a model, a model girl now, a model woman. We shall be using those model girl, girls to educate the other ones. Thank you, thank yes. you, honorable member. As a parent, you have had one honorable member that for us girls, we reach an extent where we we naturally have to go into menstruation. As a parent. Have you taken 
uh, uh, care to ensure that at least you facilitate a girl child to remain in school who is affected by this natural <laughs> kind of uh, menstruation? Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will talk for my experience. I have five girls. I started with girls. Then the sixth one is the boy. All these girls are employed today, apart from one who is now applying for a certain job in the local government. But what it matters is the parents. The attitude towards your children matters a lot. You treat your girls like your boys. When the, you educate the girl as a, at the very tender age, when she's still very young, by the time she finishes in a six, she's not moved by very many other things. But you provide all the necessities. Whatever you can afford, put her. They will go to university. But there are still parents. The, the issue of saying that the, the girl will bring wellness, the cows are not there today. That's about some 30 years ago. I don't think a girl who is not educated is being, a, they, they will pay a lot of dowry. I've attended so many introduction ceremonies. Today, during introduction, they come with everything. A girl who is a graduate is properly paid, the, the dowry is properly paid. But the PCD girl, senior two girl, the, even the introduction is not there. The very big introduction is not there. <laughs> I have that experience. What are the challenges that you have had children? What are the challenges? What are some of the, the one of them is the, the early marriage administration. What are other challenges that are keeping the Sabine girls out of school Are you as a parent? Uh, thank you, Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, in fact, as a parent, I have an experience. In fact, uh, during the time when Kalja is uh, being brought as a child, in this generation, we find it very possible that all girls have to go to school. So the challenges we are seeing this in this generation, Madam Speaker, uh, you find that you, you educate your child, child then reaching a, a certain level, you find our age mate as men. Men at times are proved like wild animals. You find somebody who is aged to the, to the father of a girl, befriending a girl, and you find that he, pregnants, uh, he, he tries to impregnate preg the girl. And therefore, when you went to, to face the, the law, you find the community storming upon the, uh, the, the, the family relatives, and even the family re relatives, by the way. And you find that it is not hard to handle the issues according to the law. So they will, they will go by negotiating. They say, now, since this thing has ha happened, therefore let us negotiate. We just uh, leave this thing apart. Then at the end, the girl gets uh, spoiled, and at times a parent is given a token, and the girl is, gets spoiled. And at times you try even to take the girl back to school. He finds it, she finds it very hard to continue with studies because she will be there with friends, you try to change the school, but at the same time she will have that mindset that already I'm, I'm unable to continue with studies. Thank you, thank you. And I remember this is a very passionate topic once more again. In the capture here where girls are married off <coughs> at an early age, and some of them are forced to, to, to go and do some work. And we are discussing the challenges. And what can we do to ensure that we really keep children, uh, girl child, in, in school? Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, we are going to discuss more of the challenges, most especially from girls who have gone through this and those who have dropped out of school. Welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament, still sitting here in Sabine sub region, and we are particularly in Kapchora district discussing issues that affect this region. And one of the issues is the education of a girl child. If the, the children that are dropping out of school here is at a very high rate, and most, most of the girls are not finishing their education. Some of them either go to school, others never go to school. So, Honorable Member, I'm told you were a teacher. Could you please outline some of the benefits that the girl child would get when, or the parents would get when they take their children to school? Because people tend to think that marrying off a, a girl at an early age is actually worth Yes, of Honorable Members, I am Honorable Joyce Chemta, I am a teacher, and I'm going to discuss on the teacher's perspective what we get 
First of all, among the Sabine, talking about sexual issues in public is taboo. And so, our children, as they grow up, don't come face to face with these sexual issues. So as they are growing up, maybe they hear about it from school, from friends, and they try to discover on so their own. So there is no sex education within the community? Yes, because it's taboo. Parents have this respect, they don't talk about it, and because of uh, maybe a lot of work, the aunties who used to, have to, who used to play this role are no longer there to be close to their to, to the children to tell them about these sexual issues. So some of them, when they get to their early teenage age, they're just taken up by events, and so they get excited and end up getting into early pregnancies, they get into early marriages, sometimes voluntarily out of ignorance, and when they get pregnant also, some, they are, most of the parents neglect them, they blame them, they accuse them and condemn them for getting pregnant at an early age. And they don't take care of them thereafter. So the girls are forced into marriages at an early age when their parents don't mind. They blame them, yet at the end of the day when you analyze it, it's the parent who is to blame for the early pregnancies. But, uh, but as a teacher, do you think government has done its role in ensuring that uh, the, the girl children go to school and they are retained in school? The girls go to school, but the retention process is not very well defined. Yeah, the girls are there, there is free education, but the retention is not there. For instance, if the schools would, uh, would have like maybe sanitary pads to give to these girls, because nowadays even girls in P5 undergo menstruation, so if schools had the sanitary pads for these girls, and maybe in basic needs, a colleague already talked about this. If, if, if there was a way, then that, the girls would really be retained in school. And then the other thing is uh, many parents in our region also involve children in child labor. And so the girls mature so fast. You know, they are, they, are, they are the ones cooking, they are the ones going for water, they are the ones going for firewood. Sometimes they even provide for the families. By the way, they go and sell the firewood and buy sugar. And so the girls mature at a very early age. So they end up dropping out of school because they are already involved in this household course at a very early age. Some of them even fall pray to rapists and, and, and bad people on their way. For example, there are these children who bring firewood from up there. You see them at night with milk. Moving at 8 p.m., they are still moving door to door selling milk and, and firewood and anything else. Now, do you expect such a girl will be safe by the time they reach home maybe at 10 p.m.? Sometimes so they meet a man. It's defilement also on high here in this yes, region? Yes, it's very high. So what are the causes of defilement in this region, honorable member? You, you are yes. a lady. Why, why do you think girls are being defiled? Actually, one thing that makes the girls to be defiled, what I could call is like most of the people that stay in the town don't respect, there is no respect for the girl children. That's in the first place. Secondly, the defilement doesn't just come like on its own. The parents like auction their own children. I happened to champion something of retention of girl children in Tumba Boy in 2012, whereby we had to even form a, an, a CBO called ERASCOC, which is Enhancing Retention and School Completion of Girl Children. From there, when I went to the community, I found out that girls were being, like they could use the neighbors, they let the girls get out of home, sleep at the neighbor's place, then on sleeping at the neighbor's place, there would be consensus between the neighbor and the parents that someone else will come to the neighbor's place and in turn uses this girl. Oh. And after we even got that one of the teachers of Tumba Boy Primary School was involved in this. We just, in this case, until we had to arrest the teacher, but after negotiations came in and the teacher was released. Up to now, I'm very annoyed. I cannot even speak very well because the same girls, when we interrogated them, they were very serious and they said it is our parents that do this for us. Then secondly, they send these children like people down there in Tumbo Boy. What they do, they get donkeys or they give these girls 
fire would to carry on their heads but like when they are going back home late in the night what will happen is they pass through isolated areas and in these isolated areas is where these men wait for them but why should they pass in those isolated areas because they have no option these are their the, the only routes to those go are the home. pathways home yeah so as, as parents what, what do you think parents should do in this scenario first of all i would like to appeal to all the parents of sebei region to number one know their role as parents when you bring up a child when you, when, you, when you know that you're a parent, please know your role. Most parents are not aware of their complete role. You cannot have a child of P3, P4, P5 go for firewood and use the same firewood to sell, to, to, to buy for you sugar, and even use the same shoe money to go for your booze. So parents should take their role as parents and have the children be children until they are grown up. They can help in the household cause, but not in everything. That is my appeal to our parents. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Member. I think, Honorable Members, you have heard for yourself. Yes, Honorable Member. To me, the government has tried its best because one of it is... It Order, has, Honorable Members. It has provided UPE, USE, so that once a child finishes primary, is able to go to secondary. So it is the responsibility of the parent to work hard so that the child completes what? University. However, the only problem in universities is the costs. University studies are very high. It is not uh, below a million, which affects some of the parents who have low incomes. So the government should try to reduce the costs at where? At university, so that they don't burden these parents. However, at primary level, I look at parents not playing a very good role. For example, they are not too much in touch with the teachers. And this one causes low performance of a girl child. Most of the girls in Capturra go to secondary with 25, uh, 28, while sometimes the boy can make it better to 20 aggregates below. So the parents should have a very good relationship with the teachers of their children so that they get to know the progress of their children. <coughs> Some girls are slow learners and they need a lot of what? Concentration. That is what I can say. Thank you. Me. Thank you, Honorable Member. I think you have heard. I am happy to hear that government has done its role to ensure that girl children go to school, remain there and complete their studies. But it seems the parents in this region are not doing enough. I never remember you are a parent. Why, 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 why are you keeping girls at school? Why are you not ensuring that the girl child goes to school, remains there and complete their studies? During our time, we used, our girls used to be very resistant very much. At this time, a girl, if he has, he has reached the P, he has reached S4 and he has failed to get money uh, to, be, to continue with her studies. And again, that girl, the father tells the girl to, to wait for waiting for some sort of, uh, to look for some money. Our girls used to be, used to be, to li used to listen to the parents because there were people who had gone for circumcision and they fear the parents. They resist, they have no stimulation. Now at this moment, girls who have left free, they are just there and he is ever free. You know when he reaches to S4 or SP7. But are you playing your role as a parent, Honorable Yes, you play, but when he goes out, you understand, because we used to, uh, to interview some. They say I, our stimulation is very high because they were just simple girls who have not got such a circumcision. Okay. But for me, I've got the girls who are circumcised. But if they resisted no, we, 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 until we. time came without it going anywhere until they finish the day study. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Member. Yes, Honorable Member holding the podium. What, what, what are the parents not doing? Order. Thank order you, the house thank you very members. much, Madam Speaker. I'm Chebet Michael, Kapchora District. What I want to say, actually, me as a parent, I'm a parent of uh, two girls, two boys, and I treat them equally. And I'm selling this message to most of the parents. You show your children love. Because you don't 
divide them. Don't say this is a boy, this is a girl. And I want to tell my people, I tell the honorable house, when you show these girls their, their, their love, they will even show you the love. And most of the, the parents here are benefiting from the girls than even the boys. When you are sick, you will find that the girl comes and says, my father or my mother is sick and attends to you. He leaves the, hus the house, the husband's house, and comes to attend to you. So we have seen most of these girls coming to attend to parents than even the boys. So I'm saying, please, don't, don't divide the children. Treat them equally. Don't say this is a girl, this is a boy. And the, again, another thing, we should also get concerned about time of these children when they are coming home. I've seen even most of the parents don't take concern of the time of these children of reaching home. You'll find them, one member said, one honorable, honorable said, that you'll find the girls as being sent to go and uh, take a firewood to the market, and that's why these girls are getting problems. Madam Speaker, you are told that this girl at times pass a narrow, I mean, a, 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 this, a, this isolated areas. And that's why they get problems. So it is actually our concern. Why should we let these girls to go and look for us money which feeds us? Why don't we go as a parent, take, be concerned and leave other things and be, take, uh, go there and bring the necessities? And another thing, Madam Speaker, which I've seen, it's also poverty. I want the government to come up with a program of helping these uh, the, 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 the parents like NARS and other programs. You know, NARS has also done something very good in our villages. Let them also continue bringing up programs with, like that so that they can make these people get money from this. If these people get money, then they will now what? Manage to buy other things at home. What should we do to ensure that the girl child goes to school? Madam Speaker, it is important for the parents to provide a conducive environment for the girl child. Uh, Madam Speaker, it is, uh, we have empirical evidences that in most families, whenever children go home in the evening, maybe after school, um, uh, the girls go to the kitchen to cook while the boys are reading in separate rooms. So we should also uh, provide uh, a conducive environment for the girl child such that at the end of the day, both of them have enough time to read their books not allowing the girl to go to the kitchen, then the boy goes to the private room to read. Uh, Madam Speaker, I believe that uh, the government of Uganda should also extend the educational facilities to the rural areas where these girls come from. Uh, when you go to, uh, when you look at uh, Kapchorwa, it's a base up region, there are ends where there are not schools, like a place like Tumbaboy, there is no uh, secondary school, for D, there is no secondary school. So girls have to move to walk for about five kilometers to go to a secondary school. And you know girls are vulnerable, not like boys. Boys are strong, they can move for a long distance, but the girls are vulnerable. First of all, they can even reach home at night when they are tired. When they reach home, they go to the kitchen. They cannot get time to read their books. Thank you, Honorable Member. Um, I have a Honorable Member on the podium, yes. Honorable Member, what's the way forward as a parent? Because I think the burden has fallen back on you. It is your problem that you're not uh, doing enough to ensure that you keep the children in school, take them to school and ensure that they finish their education. Thank you, Madam Speaker. For us this way, after you have gambled to bring up this child of yours to, do, to another level, we see ahead, but due to balogamy, even polygamy can make somebody to, to bring down a child. So the polygamy should be avoided? Yes. <laughs> the way forward is government should empower the Sabine community by resettling them in Sugongong so they can practice <laughs> a commercial farming and they can take care of their families, including the girls and the, and the boys. Thank you, thank, thank you, Honorable Member. Can you please wind yeah. up as Beatrice? All right. uh, what is the way forward? Why children or girls drop out of school is when you look at there are some girls that are slow learners at school, and because teachers, some teachers lack professional ethics, they end up abusing these girls, they end up uh, talking uh, in a way that they don't motivate these girls, so it makes the girls to drop out of school. So one of the way forward is to make sure that we instill some kinds of uh, 
professional ethics in our teachers such that there will be a retention of girls in schools. Then I looked at also in some schools you realize that they share even toilets. Now you see girls uh, doesn't like like sharing toilets with boys. So one thing that government needs to do is to ensure that they make sure that they build more toilets for girls and boys. They separate them so that we can retain these girls in school. Then uh, another thing also I wanted to put behind is lastly is uh, we also lack role models in our society. We have a few ladies in our region like the Bay sub region who have attained high qualifications in education. Maybe we have people like Beatrice only chilling at. So what we need to do is to have as many role models that these girls can look into and say, hey, I won't be like this. I won't be like Kajina. I won't be like Yihu and all that. So oh. if we do that, we shall be in position to retain girls in school. Thank you, so Honorable let's... Member, for that information. Thank can we have a way forward in, in one minute, uh, Honorable Beatrice? I don't want to see a situation where women are not able to express themselves like it happened in the previous sitting in Parliament. We have very bright Sabine women, but we are, we are not able to express themselves. So what do we do? Let's use all avenues to yes, ensure Yes, I have given the women the opportunity. I, want, I wanted the women to speak about the challenges of taking But they do not know how to speak quiet. in English. What is the problem of Sabine region? What is the problem of women? The problem but is that they, did, they didn't go to school. They are not able to express themselves. So we do not want that to happen 10 years down the road. The solution is let's use all avenues to ensure that all girls go to school, pass bylaws at the sub-county, at the parish, and the at the village level and ensure come January, February, let all our children go to school and more attention on the girl child. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Honorable Member. In just two minutes, Honorable Member, you have come from very far to Kapchura. As a community leader, what, what, what do you think we should do as a region? Because this, I think, extends upwards up to Karamoja. We have a lot of challenges. As you see, Morita Sub County is one of the largest sub county in the whole of Nakapiripiri district. But unfortunately, the government is not seeing. That sub county is marginalized. So what should, what should the government do? The government, imagine the sub, that sub county has only got two parishes with only two schools, primary schools and of which one of, the, one of the schools is 100 and something kilometers from the other. So we find that we have a lot of challenges. Children cannot walk from, for, for 100 and something kilometers. So that's why we find that girl child is abused. And there is no education within that very sub -county. Thank you. Within us now, we are almost three who are land only in that very sub county. The rest are just literate completely. Even to find a girl of P7, girl child, is nothing. Let's put all our hands and let's fight and give us also support to fight this government to at least push schools to every village in that very sub county. Thank you. Otherwise, that's not all this night. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Because of time constraints, we cannot go beyond this topic. And the responsibility is back on the parents. I think you have to do enough to ensure that the girls in Sebais, in Sabin sub region, go to school. We cannot actually exhaust this because of time constraints. It has been nice holding NTV People's Parliament in the capture here. And please, those in the north, wait for us. Those in the west, wait for us and those in central wait for us ntv people's parliament is coming in your region thanks honorable member for being part of this honorable house i am still agnes nandutu the speaker of people's parliament and i add again this house until next time